Hello, my name is Danny, and I'm a developer here at Sharpie, and I'm going to be talking about the idea of reusability. Um, so, because I'm as lazy as the next person, I think <laughs> one of the most wonderful moments when using Angular is uh, seeing a mock-up and realizing that you can implement uh, one of the features in it with basically a line of code. Um, in this example that you're probably, some of you are probably familiar with uh, from the Angular homepage, you get a full-fledged tab interface complete with styles and markup and interaction uh, with basically a single line of code <laughs> or a couple lines of code. Um, so Angular gives you a taste of that right out of the box with directives like ng repeat. Um, but to really have those moments repeatedly requires you as a developer or as a team of developers to uh, assemble kind of your own collection of these reusable components uh, and directives. So the idea that you should create reusable components is not really all that novel or controversial. Um, in fact, it's pretty foundational to Angular and a lot of other popular web frameworks. And they all have their own unique approaches to actually building these components, um, which I'm not really going to go into in this talk. Um, but overall, it's pretty clear that, uh, that web standards are evolving with an eye towards this idea of uh, a modular reusable component architecture. And the rationale behind that is, is actually very clear. Um, it's probably safe to say that the majority of the functionality that you implement in, a, in an application uh, has been done before in some capacity, uh, either by you or someone in your organization or you're in, your, in your network. Um, and that's a good thing. It means that we're designing interfaces that are consistent with kind of established patterns and principles. Um, the promise of this component architecture then is that you get to spend all your time doing the fun, unique, interesting stuff and less time on the stuff that uh, has been done before. So, uh, but I've been thinking a lot lately about the, the process of actually assembling uh, that collection, right? Um, that collection of reusable stuff. Uh, essentially, how do you as an individual or as a team get to a place that uh, building an application is just sort of taking a bunch of building blocks, putting them together, and then getting the sum total of that functionality. Um, mostly, or because I, I don't think it's quite as straightforward as it at first seems, right? Um, you might think kind of based on all this stuff that you should just make every piece of code you ever write reusable um, and, and sort of applicable in other contexts. Um, so that you would get as quickly as possible to that point of uh, building an application fully out of these building blocks. Um, but I'm going to argue that it's, that's just not really a realistic approach. Um, and then try to come up with kind of a better way of thinking about it. So first off, <laughs> um, it's always more work to make a thing reusable, right? Um, that's because in addition to just making it work in that particular little isolated context, you then have to think about how do I make it work in a whole host of other ones that I don't even know about. Um, you know, that involves both anticipating things that will go wrong in those other contexts and uh, thinking through the different requirements and customizations that might be desirable in those other contexts. Um, so given that, it, it follows that you, it's just not tenable to make everything that you do reusable, right? Um, there's some selection process that goes into designing which things to invest that time uh, to, to make reusable. Secondly, uh, it's impossible to predict the future requirements of a particular project uh, or the other projects that might use the thing that you, you, you uh, made. Um, so this makes it very difficult to design a thing that's just 100% plug and play whenever you might need it down the line or whenever someone else might need it. And thirdly, uh, making a component reusable, it, it entails a kind of freezing where you are taking some features um, of, of all the features you could make, uh, you're taking some and saying, I'm going to support these. Uh, and then there's others that you decide to not include, right? 
Um, so the more you freeze a thing to make it reusable, the less you can kind of do that ad hoc customization uh, without having thought about it beforehand. So um, I wanted to kind of briefly discuss two examples of reusable components at Tarpeet um, through this kind of viewpoint. First off, we have the aforementioned directive CB tooltip, um, which I think is actually a very good example of one to make a reusable component. Um, you can see right there as an example, uh, you know, fairly straightforward tooltip. Everyone knows what a tooltip is, probably. Um, but the actual implementation of a robust tooltip system uh, is a little more difficult than you might think. As mentioned, you know, there's like sort of uh, there's different enhancements that you can add that that make it much more usable. Um, so, uh, let's see. Sorry. <laughs> um, but oh yeah. So it's probably a thing that you only want to really do once, um, given the amount of work. Um, but it's also a thing that you're probably just going to reuse over and over and many applications. Um, it, it's a very core interaction element. Uh, so the expected reuse is very high. So I feel like there's this kind of weird calculation that is it, that goes into evaluating whether to turn a thing into a reusable component. Um, and, and that is, does the amount of work to implement it um, coupled with kind of the expected reuse, uh, justify the work to make it reusable, right? You're sort of comparing these two things. Um, and it's, I guess, a pretty classic upfront cost versus long-term benefit type question. Um, and in this case, I, or I think tooltips pretty solidly favor making them reusable. Um, some other considerations are that tooltips are a very established interaction paradigm. Um, <laughs> you just don't see a whole lot of innovation in the tooltip space, so it's probably a feature that uh, you can reasonably expect to remain consistent in the future wherever you might want to implement them. Uh, mobile's going to change that. That is true. Um, that is a good point. <laughs> uh, so, and lastly, uh, but related, tooltips are probably going to be relatively self-contained. Um, it's it's kind of hard to imagine, uh, you know, something else hooking into the state of a tooltip to control itself and all that. Like, but at that point, you're not really doing a tooltip; you're doing something else. Um, so the customization requirements are probably going to be very minimal. Um, and here you can see the actual implement implementation of CB tooltip. Um, it's very simple, very easy to understand, pretty minimal required configuration. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> on the flip side, we have uh, a component that I made called horizontal bar chart. <laughs> um, so, when I was implementing a page in one of our products, I, I noticed these, like a couple bar charts, and I thought to myself, that is an opportunity to make a thing reusable. Um, so I made this directive that took in an, an array of objects and showed uh, you know, a variable number of uh, properties as columns, and had one, co or one property that decided the width of the bar, um, you know, one or two more little things added to it. Um, and it all went great for a short period of time. Um, so though this was actually reused successfully elsewhere in our product, uh, I now don't really believe that it was wholly a, uh, an appropriate thing to make reusable. Um, so first off, the upfront work of making a bar chart is pretty minimal, like edits, at its root, you could do it with uh, ng repeat and like some CSS. Um, it might be a little annoying to have to do it over and over, but it's just not a very complex visualization to implement. Um, so that sort of upfront implementation cost is, is much smaller. Um, and so even though we do use 
bar charts here somewhat frequently. The cost of implementing each one doesn't quite add up as much um, as it did with the tooltip. Um, so also you'll notice here that reusability is not only an initial cost. Um, so if you ever have to go back and kind of maintain or update the component because requirements have changed or you've encountered a, a new context where it doesn't work, um, I think an estimate of that work to the best of your ability at the time should factor into that, that decision of whether uh, it's worth it to make the thing reusable. Um, so I didn't realize just how much and how often our bar charts are kind of customized. Um, so I had no real way of kind of predicting the future requirements of the directive. And uh, this resulted in some kind of weird hacks to conditionally include certain functionality in some cases um, that aren't really that pretty. <laughs> um, and here you can see it in action, kind of complete with this laundry list of things that tell it how to behave in this specific uh, context. And just to give a little more clarity on kind of what ended up being con or complicated about it, I guess, um, here are sort of two examples of the directive or the component. Um, so these are the things that it was really built to support, just sort of arbitrary numbers of columns, you know, like one, two, or one, two, three, um, relative bar width, um, sorting based on something. But down here, you can see some of the stuff that started to kind of stretch it pretty thin. Um, this optional column headers that use uh, other directives. Um, there was sort of this, it's hard to see, but there's a functionality to kind of like decide which bars you want to include, uh, which is its own directive. Uh, and then there's sort of different filters we're applying to the numbers um, or the, the data. Uh, so those are also, you know, custom filters. So just figuring out how to sort of pack all this configurability and customization into a single, originally very simple directive uh, proved to be a bit of a challenge. Um, so I think if I were implementing the bar chart now, I would either not abstract it into a component or uh, maybe try to think a little more about separating it into separate things that do these kind of custom things specifically, um, rather than trying to make this monolithic big thing that does everything. Um, so, uh, I think the big takeaways for me so far in thinking about this stuff are, um, first off, just take some time to think about this stuff. Uh, you know, it's, it's easy to just sort of either go full on implementing something and not even thinking about reusability at all, or just sort of take that, that, that approach at the beginning where you, you're thinking, oh, I should make everything possible reusable. Um, but I think, you know, to maximize your time and, and get the best utility out of uh, the kind of stuff that Angular offers, um, it's important to kind of consider how hard it is to implement this thing each time, uh, how often you would reasonably expect to reuse it in uh, other products or other people to use it. Um, and then weigh both of those um, against both the initial cost of making it reusable and then to the best of your ability, kind of the uh, ways in which you might imagine it being customized and conf configured down the line. Um, and that should kind of factor into that cost of reusability. Second, uh, I would be cautious about making early stage things reusable. Because um, you just might kind of waste a lot of effort on a thing that just is never used again. Um, or you might spend all of your time hacking it to adapt to these changing requirements in the future. Um, I think it's probably often better to wait for a thing to solidify and just have some established utility before you spend the time and effort to make it into like a, a nicely packaged directive or component. And lastly, uh, uh, I would watch out for situations that kind of require excessive configuration to provide basic functionality. Um, so anytime you're kind of nesting a bunch of directives or you require a huge number of attributes to tell a thing how to behave in this particular context, um, 
you should probably be wary of spending time making that thing reusable, um, just because that's, you know, your time is better spent on the other parts of your application, probably. So that's all I've got so far on this. Um, if anyone has any thoughts or questions or anything, um, oh, I'll take them now. And here's my Twitter. <laughs> So the, the situation that you're describing about reusability is really interesting. Um, so like one of the instances that I faced, or and I was not fully part of this, but like I really feel that the pain of a horizontal bar chart that we got and the decision that we made to build it as reusable was not wrong. Like it's it's a you know like it's a call that you made, but more importantly, like I feel like some of the advanced libraries and plugins that I've seen and used and kind of been a part of have more taken the approach of like plugins, like make, mm -hmm. make it set to a plug and play. So you don't end up, like if you want to use this module, you don't get a lot of code because it's so big. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like make this core that's just giving you the basic functionality and if you need more things, kind of group them and like include them, maybe to require just kind of system or you know, some, something similar. So like if you want like basic rendering, then you want like icon based things, or if you want, if you want like some other style, like groups of functionalities, you can like have those. Um, that kind of work well for the way I did, but obviously I'm describing this at a high, really high level. But yeah. But that's kind of work. Um, no, I mean, I think that that's definitely a, uh, a viable avenue for approaching this. Yeah, I also, I mean, you know, I also question whether, you know, like what the right thing to do here was actually. Because um, I, I think the main problem was the, was once I made the reusable thing, I then tried to throw everything into it in the, in the future. Um, so I didn't really imagine at the time that there would be this configuration and customization. Um, so yeah, I think that's sort of the thought I have about that. Um, Totally open to keep thinking about it though. <laughs> uh, how, like, what is the um, requirements just to make something component, like, to make it a component? Like, is it like a time span, like, for a sprint, or is it like, because sometimes you just want to implement an idea just to implement it, but when does it, when does the decision to actually, actually component that? Um, you know, uh, <laughs> it, it probably varies, that's a cop yeah. out answer, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, uh, like I said at the um, end, like I, I probably in the future I'm gonna be a little hesitant when I'm first doing something like prototyping stuff to really spend much time being like, oh, hmm, how can I like make this accommodate being used in this other product or like this other situation, um, and spend a little more time just making the thing right there and achieving the goals of that prototype. Um, and then if maybe, uh, you know, a second time or third time or fourth time we, we reuse that thing or we see it's, 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 it's going to be a thing that is valuable in the future, then you can kind of spend some time on that. Um, you know, there's, there's no like hard or fast rules, but um, I think it's, it's something to just at, at least think about and, uh, and consider at the beginning. Good question. Uh, so you talk a lot about reusability, but there's a big focus on directives specifically. Right. Have you ever, in your workflow, do you guys also factor in reusability into things like services, or like an entire model? So um, like user service, or some business logic? Or yeah, uh, we, we do have that. Um, I mean, like Harry mentioned, we have a, like a feed service, I think, that is shared across our products. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think this applies often to that kind of stuff, too. Um, I think those, maybe those patterns are, like, you know, services and factories and stuff are kind of patterns that are built around reusability in a certain way. Um, whereas, I think directives, it's very easy to, um, you know, do something that isn't a reusable component, uh, and then you have to convert it to that, you know? I don't know if that made sense, but... Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, with the bar chart, uh, is the variations on the bar chart exist prior and, and you were trying to like find like the core and then expand on it? 
or was it like you built the core and then and then like through like design new updates to the bar chart happened and then you had to address those updates? Um, I'd say two of the ones listed here existed very quickly. The the icons and the custom data filters. And in the original design, I, I sort of accommodated those customizations um, through, you know, I mean, it worked. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think it was the greatest code that I've ever written. Um, but I think that maybe should have been kind of a clue that further things were coming down the line. And it, it, and it really broke when, or it, or it didn't break, but it just required a huge amount of work to get it to work with um, the stuff where you can just sort of dynamically exclude different things yeah. um, for reasons that are probably not that interesting to go into. But uh, yeah, I think, I think there were clues at the start that this was going to be a thing that we were going to use a lot, but like decide to make arbitrary little changes to every time we use it. And um, I think that should have been probably a clue to me that to be a little wary of it. Yeah. It sounds like you're building this in an agile process. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have like our six week cycle kind of process. Uh, um, so I have a couple of things to say about this. It's, it's a, it was very interesting uh, to hear, but um, it sounds like you're a victim of your own success with this widget. Uh, it kind of relates to the saying that if you want to get something done, give it to a busy man. <laughs> and uh, you had a successful widget, so it, if you can do that, why, can, why not give it a ton more things to do? Uh, um, and it sounds like this gold plating basically destroyed the cohesiveness of the widget. Yeah, um, and I think, you know, so you're sort of saying that it was designed to do a thing, mm -hmm. and then other things were just, why don't we do this? Added on that made the design bad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's totally the case. Um, but I guess maybe the only thing that I that I think about that is, uh, it, and it, and it's it's impossible to like I said to predict that stuff. Um, yeah. So this is just like a fact of life in a lot of types of uh, programming projects. Um, it but it's worth thinking about and doing the best uh, job you can to kind of predict it. Uh, and like I said, you know there maybe were clues that oh we're gonna keep wanting to do these weird things. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. I'm guessing but. Agile would have, like, say, um, maybe it's time for a spike or uh, um, re-engineering or uh, something like that, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's, I mean, I think, you know. So, and there's also limits that, you know, JavaScript is not the most object-oriented language. It uh, may have ended up uh, not using the appropriate design pattern. Yeah, that's uh, totally true. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to do... Maybe two more, and then get to our next two talks. <laughs> uh, oh, um, so, in related to, um, is there a way? So I haven't done too much with Angular, but around a little bit. Of it. Is there a way to like? Because it seems like it, you could componentize part of it to like almost create like a hybrid where there's like the core component that does like some of the bar chart stuff with like um, you know the columns and the, and the chart and the width of the bar. Um, but then, like on top of that, depending on the context and where this component lands, there's like more customized thing with like the icons and stuff. So you, like you layer it. So you have the core. So you, you can repeat that as many times as you want. But then you have like this additional layer you can add on top that, based on context, you can very much customize and whatever. But the core stays, and that's reusable. I yeah. don't know if that's a thing that you can do. But yeah, I mean, I think that. That kind of goes to what you were saying about the uh, plugin style. Um, I think the problem that I ran into was that, excuse me, uh, some of the other kind of components and directives and stuff that I was relying on weren't designed with that in mind either. Okay. And I think to get that, like, because then you just run into kind of weird scoping issues, yeah. and uh, you know, if if you have two isolate scopes on the same uh, element. That's not allowed, um, obviously. So, I don't know. I, I think that that that's probably the right solution in this instance. Um, but I, it, I think it requires a little more thought. Or What's that? I wasn't sure if it's something you can do in Angular or not. Like, oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure off the top of my head to give like a detailed, authoritative yeah, yeah. answer. But it's definitely something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> How 
How does Angular compare to your old framework in the ease of making these reusable components? Are you able to work faster? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think in the old framework, we weren't so concerned with this kind of stuff. Um, there wasn't so much of a like an idiom around you know really modular reusable components. Um, it was more like if we needed to add something, you just added it on, like piled it on. Um, and we ended up with some uh, pretty ludicrous files that <laughs> like no one knew how to read anymore. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I find Angular. I think uh, kind of the the one of the original points was that. Angular and these kind of frameworks, this is like a, a very foundational paradigm, so it encourages it more than maybe um, other frameworks might. Last question. Yeah, do you communicate with designers about components? Sorry, what? Do you communicate with designers about components you already built and ready to reuse? Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I, so I think uh, that's, that's an interesting question too. Uh, because designers probably often have some sense of what might change in the future. Uh, you know, like, you know, these are often design kind of decisions to include these things. Um, yeah, I mean, we work very closely with our designers. Um, and I think I probably, in this instance, could have sort of asked more questions up front to the designer and thought, hey, is this probably the way we're going to keep using bar charts in the future and all these other products? And maybe gotten an answer that way. But live and learn. <laughs> cool. Thank you.